something crawling in my dash display. I've never seen pixels behave like that, perhaps the pixels are starting to die but aren't permanently dead, perhaps the screen is short circuiting like others have said, or perhaps, hell I don't know maybe it's possessed or something, it's most likely something messing with the polarizing layer, there's a lot of various stuff inside the LCD panel that can mess this up. Here's a page talking about issues with certain Sony LCDs and there's a section talking about a similar, but somewhat different effect. This is referred to variously as stationary scribble, squiggly, random line, or road mapping, and tends to be a solid color such as yellow, purple, or blue-green on a white background, but it varies somewhat depending on the specific color of the image on the screen. The problem tends to grow worse over time. For the most part, this problem seems to have been caused by defective materials in a specific lot of LCD panels that were installed in the optical blocks, which are particularly sensitive to damage arising from hot-cold, on-off, cycling. The color of the scribbles likely correlates with the light path with the damaged LCD panel. Solved. Thanks. Appreciate the informative links. This watch has been passed down through my wife's family. Any idea who made it and how old? Try looking for any writing of it in the back or sides, you can find it easier by looking against the light. You can also go to an antique place or watch repair store to get professional help, open the back and take a look for yourself. A jeweler will as well if you're not comfortable doing it. Unsolved. Still searching for answers. Solved. Thanks for the input, it is an RC warranty. I was able to open the case with the push pin release that I never noticed. The name is stamped into the inside cover. I found a receipt that indicates the watch was serviced within the last 20 years. It wounds smoothly and is ticking away. What are these things I keep seeing on nearly all the London bus stops in my area? It's potato art, and I'm not even kidding. The artist is unknown, some say by an artist called No Nose, if you look for London bus stop potato art you can find many more articles written about it. I see, how strange, I'm surprised they haven't rotted away tbh, they've been there for some months in the summer heat wave too, solved I guess. Found this very odd place deep in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, looks almost like a computer chip or industrial factory complex, but I seriously have no idea, looks like a lake slash pond with some digital noise, there is no noise at Bing Maps. Huh, that's weird, is there a reason why the digital noise would be applied perfectly to the borders of the lake? Is it due to the water? I'm just curious about what exactly causes that effect if it is indeed what's going on here. It could be artifacts of image compression algorithm that are highly visible on a dark area filled with one color, just guessing. Likely solved. Okay I understand. Well thanks for the input, it just caught my eye when I was scrolling around the map, especially since none of the surrounding waters had the same effect haha. <laughs> what is this fish with strange writing? The symbols are old, I can't remember where I've seen them before, but it was alchemical or chemical related. The backwards M for sure stands out in that regard, it was a symbol for a metal. Just can't remember what runic language it came from, they are kinda similar to Phoenician letters the first picture at least. It might be the ichthys thing. In ancient Greek, the word for fish is, but if you use that word as an acronym, it stands for Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. Early Christians used that and the fish symbol as a secret code when Christianity was illegal. Looks like it may be this, but a different manufacturer. This is definitely it. I recall hearing that iron deficiency was a serious problem in developing countries due to improper diets that consisted of mostly pastas and rice, which are a poor source of iron. The solution was to boil chunks of iron with food to increase the iron content but many were skeptical and hesitant to cook with chunks of metal in their food. The iron was shaped into a lucky fish that would provide it addition health benefits when you boiled water with the fish in it. Spotted on the train in Copenhagen this morning, rolling white light across the buttons, the color lights flashed sporadically, headphones jack connected and the user was wearing headphones, ladybug appears on the top left. It is an OPSI by Teenage Engineering, a synthesizer and sequencer. Man, I saw some guy playing with an OP1 and wanted one so bad until I saw the price. I have no doubt it's worth it, though. 
same, but I'm not creative enough or willing to spend that cash either haha. <laughs> What might this key be for? It separates when squeezed. It's for smoking the leftover end of a marijuana cigarette when the fire is too close for you to be able to hold it, called a roach, without burning your fingers. Used by people that don't put their roaches in pipes to smoke them or just throw them away. Devices such as this are much easier to handle than two pennies, chopsticks, or personal care tweezers, and don't draw attention like non-medical personnel possessing hemostats or the classic alligator clip with residue from the roach. This simple key-like device will have any residue rubbed off in the pocket of the user and can be camouflaged on the user's keychain. Ingenious invention, solved. These jellyfish on the Welsh coast, UK, about 7 to 8 inches in length on average. On the northeastern US coast, hundreds of comb jellies like this wash up on the shore, to see if their comb jellies come back at night and see if they glow in the dark. Looks like comb jellies, singular is called a sea gooseberry. Best I can find, but not certain. This seems most likely so far. A salp seems possible too but I think this is a better match. Likely solved. Found this at my grandma's house in Austria. Apparently belonged to my dead grandpa. What did he get it for? It's a commemorative coin for people who served in the SS Panzer Division. Panzer is the German word for tank. The SS, or Staffel was a military organization in Nazi Germany run by Heinrich Himmler, one of Hitler's right-hand men. They were a little like a secret police organization. They did a lot of the dirty work in World War II, so whoever received this coin would have served in the tank division of the SS. All the other things around the edge of the coin are the other divisions of the SS. Here a little more info. Oh so it was basically a thanks for participating medal. Thank you so much for the link. I never was able to find the same coin on the web. I think we are solved here. What is this animal? Is this a real chicken or just a small person in a chicken suit? It's a Brahma chicken. They are normally big, but this chap is abnormally big for his breed. Okay so it's just an absolute unit. Thanks. Solved. Grandpa says a Russian soldier left it during WW2. What is it? On the sides it says Nepemiati Folkhovskogo Fronta Sorry for my Cyrillic misunderstandings. It was found in northern Poland. Made of aluminium. Looks like it may be a cigarette case. It's called trench art, soldiers with time on their hand would carve etc. everyday mundane objects turning them into works of art out of sheer boredom. There can be a lot of downtime between battles especially back then. You could donate to a museum, I doubt it has monetary value to them. You could sell it privately however, I'm sure people would be interested in paying for something like this. You should consider getting it back to the guy, granddad, or his kids. Won't make you any mine, quite the opposite but that kind of trip could make a really nice story for you. More likely his family, he seems to be born in 1919 so it is unlikely that he is still with us. What is going on here? Apologies if this isn't the proper sub. Remnant of an otter's meal maybe? Was it close to water? Located high and dry on a hillside, looks like a rodent had a stockpile of snails in that burrow and is evicting the shells as it eats them. I'm in eastern US, I had a 10x 4 feet garden plot at my old place that was visited every early fall and late winter by raccoon, it was usually one at a time and it would dig up and eat whatever it could find, if it grabbed a snail, it would walk to the brick outline of the plot, eat it, via holding it with both hands and slurping slash sucking it out, and leave the shells there, never were there that many but they did seem to find all the plot could offer. This 25 feet long trailer, for hauling gliders. Solved. You guys over here are quick. How does one fit an entire glider in there? The wings are removed and stored in racks then it's just the body and they are not very large around and of course the tail fit up towards the back. As someone who toured for years in a band that had a conversion van slash trailer that thing must be a nightmare in high winds. The band van was actually blown slash forced off the highway multiple times because wind gusts in the midwest but luckily never flipped. I guess this is lower profile but that whole side must just work like a sail. They are actually pretty steady if you have a good trailer. Low center of gravity and low profile help avoid much sway from the wind. It's harder getting the damn thing in and out of the gate at the small airports you usually fly out of haha. <laughs>